Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start with the story. AITA for moving out after my boyfriend demanded I pay half the rent. My boyfriend 26M and I, 24F, have been together for three years. We live in NYC and he's making over $200 in K a year, while I'm knee-deep in my master's program for social work. I'm doing this unpaid, year-long internship three days a week, plus classes two days a week. There's barely any paid internships in social work, and internships are a must. I'm basically working, studying, commuting, or in class for 12 hours a day. My weekends are my only free time, so getting a paid job is out of the question. My mom helps cover my MetroCard and healthcare, but everything else is on loans. Before I moved in with him, my apartment had a roach infestation, so I was crashing at his place a lot. My lease was about to end, and he asked if I wanted to move in with him. I joked that his living standards would drop because I couldn't afford a fancy place, but he insisted he'd cover the rent until I finished grad school, then we'd split it based on income. I was actually looking to live in a cheaper spot in Queens or Brooklyn, but he loves his current place and wanted me to move in, since he'd be paying the rent. So in August, I moved into his $5 in k month luxury condo. Out of nowhere, he started asking me to pay half the rent, $2.05 slash month. I was so confused because he was the one who said he'd cover the rent in full. Apparently his friends think it's weird that I don't pay rent and that I'm some kind of gold digger. I told him I can't afford $2.05 a month, and he called me a leech. So I told him maybe he should find someone from his own social class, who wouldn't be a leech. I ended up crashing at a friend's place while I figured things out. I talked to my mom about it and she can help, but the max she can cover is $800 and I found some places in Queens within that budget, less than 15 minutes from the city and close to my school. I went to check them out, texted the landlord and my new roommates and already signed the lease. When I told my boyfriend about my new place, he got upset and asked me to stay. He said he'd be okay with me paying $800 in a month instead of $2.05, but I don't trust that he won't change his mind again and ask for more money later. He lived in this condo alone for several years, so it's not like he can't afford to live there without my help. I wouldn't mind splitting rent with him, but I would have to live in a more affordable place outside of Manhattan like I originally wanted. Apparently, some of our mutual friends think I'm being unreasonable for moving out, instead of talking to him and staying by paying the amount I can afford in rent, and that I shouldn't have let him pay my portion of the rent. I did dump him. I blocked him and his idiot friends on everything. My friends also blocked him since he tried to contact me through them. I'm going to enjoy being single and never relying on a man financially ever again. I'm going to make a few clarifications since a lot of you are confused and clearly aren't familiar with NYC. 1. Yes, it is possible to find a room for $800 and in Queens when you have several roommates. But my room is small as shit, has no AC, which obviously isn't an issue now, but will be in the summer and is above a restaurant which means I'll probably have rodent roomies, my current roommate told me that they did have a rat problem in the past but it's supposedly fixed however, knowing these mutant city rats I know they'll come back, but this is the best I can do for now. I'm not some new, bright-eyed transplant who thinks NYC is only the trendy and rich parts of Manhattan, so I know where to look. 2. In general, NYC landlords have a 40x rent rule. Landlords that accept guarantors follow the 80x rule, but some landlords are more lenient when it comes to students. My landlord's son is also an alumni of the school I'm currently attending and is from the same cultural-slash-ethnic background as me which probably gave me some leverage, along with the fact that my mom meets the 80x requirement. It also took me a week to find my current place. 3. I just started my two-year MSW program this September. I finished undergrad 2.5 years ago and worked full-time before starting my master's degree. So yes, I did have a job and paid my own rent, which was $10.25 in slash month for a roach-infested apartment in Queens that I shared with a roommate. I obviously don't have time to work now due to my schedule. My place was not rent-stabilized. I'm confused as to how some of you came to this conclusion. It was cheap because it was a shitty place, and no one wants to live there. 4. Yes, my ex does make that much money. It's NYC, he's been in the workforce for five years and people here make more money than they would in whatever town you're from, especially in his field. It was initially shocking to me that someone with just a bachelor's could earn that much while contributing absolutely nothing to society, but that's life. The last thing I need right now is non-NYCers from the rest of bumfuck America trying to have some sort of weird gotcha moment because they think sex and the city and rich transplants on social media is representative of the real NYC. Comment. Left car 6520. 
oops since I'm top comment I suppose I'm gonna actually add an opinion. It is refreshing to see someone just up and say nope, that ain't gonna work, and then promptly exit the crappy situation, and take care of things. The audacity to suddenly demand a cool two dollars and five cents, after you had an agreement, knowing you had previously suggested moving somewhere affordable and he insisted, because his friends hurt his ego, while grossly insulting you, makes him seem weak-willed, thin-skinned, self-scented, kinda manipulative, and a terrible negotiator. Because now he's sat home alone with his sad face on that his GF left, plus he's got no chance of getting a bit of rent for the place he probably can't afford, and no chance of lording it over you anymore which it seems like he might have been inclined to do. Talk about a backfiring plan. Moonstars. And yay. They think you're being unreasonable? That's rich. He literally convinced you to move into his apartment, turning down your offers to find a cheaper place so you could contribute. The fact that his friends see you as a gold digger and don't appear to know the full story, the fact that you offered to pay and to find a cheaper place and he insisted otherwise, is also a red flag to me and makes me question how he talks about you to his friends. Definitely and and I would question why you would want to date someone who is so easily influenced by his friends' uninformed opinions of you. Verot. He needed to tell his friends, you don't know her, she's not a gold digger, I'm the one who asked her to move in, and that I would pay the rent until she finishes grad school. The fact that he didn't is probably cause he partially believes them. I'm with Op. He moved the goalposts twice already and is messing with her life. She should keep her independence. Wonderboos. I'm also guessing she is made up for not paying rent by doing things like cleaning, cooking, laundry, act. Now BF is going to have to do that shit for himself, or hire a housekeeper. Apprehensive. You know, I think it's actually even worse. His rent is $5 and K a month, and he clears after deductions, maybe $8 and K or so for that same period. He's, per op, living in an especially expensive area of NYC. Not sure if utilities are included on the rent, but I would imagine that just existing in that area is super expensive, then add on entertainment, clothing, dining out etc. I also wonder if the condo only has one bedroom, thus preventing him from having a regular roommate. So maybe he tries to finagle up into a financial situation, with housing that benefits him, without being honest with her. It's all so juvenile. If he had been honest and reciprocated her attempts at grown-up communication, they could be living in a more affordable place that she could contribute to right now. But he doesn't want to leave his cool pad that he can't really afford and still do cool things with his cool friends. Op made a good choice for her finances and her self-respect. Thank you for listening to the whole story. Wishing you a wonderful day.